Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on Julius Caesar. We are still in Act 2, Scene 1, which is a good thing because we just started it yesterday and there's quite a ways to go and a lot happens in this scene. So anyway, we get to hear from Brutus again today. We haven't, this monologue is pretty close in time to when yesterday's monologue happened. So yesterday he wakes up his servant Lucius and tells Lucius to go get a candle for him so that he can study. And then he had a monologue by himself on the stage where he is talking about the fact that even though he has never known Caesar to be a particularly cruel leader or a particularly um, overly emotional leader or anything like that, He's, he's afraid that once Caesar is crowned king, then all of that's gonna go out the window and he's gonna be terrible. So it's sort of like, let's kill him now. Um, if I'm able to make the, would you kill Hitler before he became Hitler reference, that's sort of what Brutus has decided he needs to do is get rid of, get rid of Caesar before he can get, before he can actually get too big for his britches, even though Brutus doesn't necessarily feel like he is. Cassius definitely thinks that he is, and some of the other conspirators think that he is. Anyway, so he, he came to the conclusion yesterday that it is better to kill Caesar before he gets too big. And then Lucius comes back in and is like, here's your candle. And also, I found this letter. If you remember, a few nights ago, Cassius was going to write a bunch of letters in a bunch of different handwritings and put them in places where Brutus could see them to, to try to encourage Brutus to... Um, to, to join the side of the conspirators um, and to, to go along that route so that Brutus would think that all of the, the general population feels the way that Cassius does. So Lucius has found one of these letters and gives it to Brutus, who sends Lucius on another errand and then um, takes a moment to read the letter. And for the sake of knowing when he's reading the letter and when he's not, this lovely playbill from Schoolgirls or the African Mean Girls play, which by the way is a fantastic show. And if you have the opportunity to see this somewhere, go see it because it's really good. Anyway, this will be the, the letter so that you can see when I'm reading the letter, when I'm not reading the letter. Okay, so Brutus reading the letter. The exhalations whizzing in the air gives so much light that I may read by them. Brutus, thou sleepst, awake, and see thyself. Shall roam, etc., speak, strike, redress. Brutus, thou sleepst, awake? Such instigations have oft been dropped where I have took them up. Shall roam, etc., thus I must piece it out. Shall roam stand under one man's awe? What roam? My ancestors did from the streets of Rome the Tarquin drive when he was called a king. Speak, strike, redress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O Rome, I make thee promise, if the redress will follow, thou receivest thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. So this letter, this letter is encouraging Brutus to, like, take action on the things that he knows he he should be doing anyway, whatever. And he, he likens it to um, to his family driving out the Tarquins previously. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird little monologue where basically he's just dealing with this letter and trying to decide whether or not he should pay attention to what it has to say. So we get some more from Act 2, Scene 1 tomorrow, I believe, when, yeah, um, some other people... In addition, in addition to finding this letter, some people are going to come and join him in his house and have some conversations, and we will get to dig into what those conversations are tomorrow. I'll see you then. Mwah.